If you find yourself stuck in a sexless marriage, I promise that there are answers for you that do not require you to break your integrity or go outside of your marriage. And I'm here to discuss those with you today. Hi, I'm Caitlin V. I am a sex and relationship coach, and this is a particularly challenging video uh, and a challenging subject for me to talk about because I have experienced a sexless marriage. You see, sexlessness in relationship can happen to anyone. It can happen within the happiest, healthiest, most radiant couples, the couples that you see loving each other, the couples that are hashtag couple goals. You see, sexlessness can happen for a whole variety of reasons, some of which we're gonna get into here today physical, emotional, mental, spiritual. Sexlessness is not restricted to just couples that have been together for 10 or 20 or 30 years. It's not just for couples who have had children. It's not just for older gentlemen who are having trouble with their postmenopausal spouses, although certainly they can experience sexlessness too. The truth is that a lack of sex in a relationship and all of the frustration that comes as a result of it are really, really common. And in this video today, we're gonna talk a little bit about what sexlessness is, we're gonna talk about why it's such a big deal, and we're gonna talk about what you can do if you find yourself in that position. But first, what even is sexlessness? And why is it that one out of five couples, give or take, experience it in their relationship? Sexlessness in a relationship is defined across the board as sex occurring less than once per year to less than 12 times-ish per year. Frankly, there's no one agreed upon definition of what sexlessness means. And so I think it's important for all of us to determine for ourselves what it means. So for you, sexlessness might be sex once a month and that feels like it's just not enough. And for someone else, once a year might be more than enough. It really doesn't matter. There's no right number of times a couple should be having sex or should be intimate every single week or month or year. Sexlessness is when one or both partners in a couple is not getting as much of or the kind of sex that they want on the basis that they want it and they're not able to reach a easy compromise or have an easy solution to the challenge. I think if we define it as that, we can actually open up the doors to what comes next, which is not how we define a sexless marriage, but what we do if we find ourselves in one. And I keep using the term marriage, it's kind of the language that I always see, but it's not just in marriage. Sexless partnership is real too. So even if your bond is not codified in a marriage, doesn't mean that sexlessness isn't an issue and isn't a challenge. And the reason that I think sexlessness is such an important thing to talk about is because when our partner says no to us for sex, when our partner is turning down our advances, avoiding sex altogether, maybe even avoiding this conversation, it hurts, it sucks. It hurts, it stings. We can feel rejected on our most intimate, most vulnerable level. I mean, sharing our sex with someone is the most intimate thing that we can do with that other person. And so for them to say no, and for them to reject us, and maybe to reject us for five, six, seven, 10, 12, 15 years, can be incredibly devastating for our self-worth and our self-esteem. People who are the more desirous partner, the partner that cares more about the sexlessness or at least more actively about the lack of sex in the marriage, often experience low self-esteem, lower self-worth, lower sense of joy, completion, lower sense of satisfaction in their marriage. They also experience more temptation to stray. They can experience a ton of resentment. They can question their value. They question if their partner even cares about them. And often they get locked in a place where a lack of sexual intimacy causes a lack of emotional intimacy because some partners require sexual intimacy to be in place before they can really tap into that emotional intimacy. And of course, as you can imagine, a lot of partners require that emotional intimacy before they can give their partner sexual intimacy. So if you have a partnership where one requires sex to feel emotional and the other requires emotions to feel sexual, then you may end up in a situation where you are landlocked. And often it is absolutely no one's fault. Sometimes sexlessness just sneaks up on us. In other words, we were 
having sex and then suddenly we noticed that we weren't. Suddenly I noticed that I couldn't remember the last time that I was intimate with my partner. Suddenly I realized it's been weeks since the last time that we had sex. Suddenly I realized the last three times, four times, five times, 11 times, I was turned down for sex by my partner. And then it's like a light bulb moment of, oh, there's an issue. I think we're experiencing sexlessness. Often it's more black and white than that. A child was born, sex fell off after that, and it just never picked itself back up again. There was a huge fight, a job loss, a massive source of stress, like a pandemic. It could be a hormone change that came with aging. It might be a physical injury. It could have been an emotional injury. It could have been an emotional affair where there was no sex, but there was a sense of infidelity and a sense of dishonesty between partners. This is not even scratching the surface of all of the reasons that a marriage can become sexless. It's also important to note that couples that are together for longer periods of time, like past the two, four, and seven year marks, and those are important marks for several reasons. Once a couple gets past those marks, they can lose novelty and sex takes work. You know, when we talk about monogamous marriage, often we're looking at monogamy as in a monopoly, as in these two people are only meant to be having sex with each other. These are the only options, which means that if you are the lower libido, lower desired partner, you have a monopoly on your partner's sex life. And so for you to treat it like it's not important or for you to assume that they'll just continue to put up with sexlessness is truly taking advantage of the fact that you have a monopoly on that person's sexual expression. And I think a lot of people have the idea that within marriage, sex is just going to be a natural state or within partnership, sex is just going to be a thing that we do, that we naturally come by, that we don't have to work for. I say this all the time. I've said it in my group coaching program, High Performance Male. I've said it to my one-on-one -on -one clients. When's the last time that you read a book on something you wanted to get better at, whether that was woodworking or finance or sailing or reselling old stuff that you found in someone's attic? We, there's books on everything. How many times over the span of your life have you read a book on sex, communication, or marriage? For most people, the answer is zero. Most people never even considered that they really could get better at sex. Enter someone like me, because as it is said, and I believe it is true, if you wanna get better at something, you need a coach to help you get there. The point that I am here to make is that sex takes work. You should not take that sexlessness or a lack of sex in your partnership to indicate that something is so severely wrong that it can never get better. And this is a really critical part of this entire conversation. In order for you to restore happiness and sexual satisfaction within your marriage, you first have to recognize that this is, yeah, it's a big deal, but it is not a unsurmountable problem, which I suppose makes it a mountable problem. I'm speaking lightly of this subject because listen, I have been there. I know the depth of the pain that one can experience when their partner isn't being sexually receptive to them. And I also know that there are solutions. And that's why I'm being a little bit light and cheeky about this is because it doesn't have to be the death knell of your marriage. It certainly does not have to be the last nail in the coffin of your sexual life. I don't care how old you are, what kind of relationship you have, kids, no kids, marriage, no marriage, where you live in the world, there are solutions available to you. This is why I brought up the reading a book about sex thing, because often when it comes to sex, we think that we're dealing with what we know, what we're like limited knowledge has provided with us. The truth is that there's a whole lot more creativity out there. There's a whole lot more colors that we can paint with than the average human being is knowledgeable about. Hence all those sex books. You're not stuck with just the limited knowledge and experience that you have when you close the bedroom door and take your clothes off. There's a whole lot more available to you. That's why I'm gonna share with you right now my seven point solution for ending sexlessness in a partnership. Number one, first process your own emotions, okay? This is what I was saying, it's heavy, it's deep, it's sad. It can feel like the deepest sadness you've ever experienced. I know, I have been there, but it does not do us any good to bring all of that emotional weight to our partner and then place that on them as blame and shame. In fact, there is no faster way to get your partner to shut down to having this whole conversation 
entirely than showing up mad, angry, and heaving blame on them. Like you caused this, you did this, you're ruining my life, you're ruining our life, you've made me miserable. It's not gonna progress the conversation in a way that's meaningful. So step number one is process your own emotions. Journal, speak with a therapist, speak with a coach, like a sex coach, you can apply below. If you want to speak with me, no matter what you do, make sure that your emotions have been processed out before you bring it up with your partner. Understand that you're likely going to have an emotional reaction, as are they, and that the more you think about that in advance, the easier it will be to deal with in real time as it's happening. Step number two is communicate. Address it with your partner. This is not the kind of conversation that you just have once and then done, this is going to be a series of conversations. You might bring it up using something like my system for having difficult conversations by saying, hey, there's something I really need to talk to you about. Is now a good time? I've been afraid to bring this up because I really don't want to hurt your feelings and I don't really know exactly how to express myself. Plus, this is a really hard subject for me to talk about, which is why I haven't spoken about it before. Here's the thing. I'm feeling that I don't have the sexual satisfaction that I really, really crave within our relationship and I want to do something about it. Are you willing to do something about it with me? I don't know exactly what that's going to look like, but as my partner, it's important for me to know that you share my concern and that you are willing to address it. And that's not asking anything in particular of you. I just want to know that you're on my team and that you're willing to look at this. Are you willing to make that commitment to me? Depending on what your relationship looks like, this might seem like a lot or this might seem like just a little, but this is a great conversation just to get the ball rolling. Get them to agree that they are willing to work on this with you and then determine what you're going to do. You might have to be really particular and say, this doesn't mean I want sex five nights a week. This doesn't mean that I want the things that I was asking for 10 years ago. This doesn't mean that we even have to focus on penetration. Maybe we just start with cuddling. Maybe we just start with intimacy. Maybe we just start by talking. Maybe we just start by hiring a coach or therapist that's gonna guide us through this process. There's no wrong way to start. Knowing that you two are on the same team and that the enemy is the problem, not your partner, is a huge step in getting to a healthy communication. And if they say they're absolutely not willing to address it, well, hang on, there's a step coming up that's going to be perfect answer to that. But first, step number three, look for the underlying causes. Sexlessness does not come out of nowhere. There's usually a root. Now, was sex never good in your marriage? Because if so, you, we need to address that. But if it used to be good, it just isn't that great anymore, then look for what has changed. A lack of novelty, children, hormones, stress, changes of job and work, grieving over loss of family members, food, diet, you name it. There's a bajillion different potential causes for sexlessness, so go through and look for those, see if you can name them, and then come up with ways that you might actually be able to address them. Number four, I'm just gonna say it again, get help from a professional. On one hand, that could look like a book. That could look like purchasing a relationship book and reading it together. That's getting help from a professional, right? Because you're reading the words of another person. On the far other end, that could look like hiring a coach to work with each of you as individuals or with both of you as a couple to guide you through a systematized process for addressing this. But either way, you're not in it alone, so don't pretend to be alone. You're not get help. Number five is set up a plan to address the problem. So this actually could break down into a thousand more steps, but I'll just give you a couple ideas of what this plan could look like. Number one, get clear on what sex is for both of you. Understand that my definition of sex and your definition of sex might be very different. One of us might value penetration more than the other. One of us might value intimacy in the non-physical sense, but being present with each other more than the other. And often when we have a collapsed definition of what sex is, is part of the problem in and of itself. Number two of this subsection category, four dash five, five dash two. I'm trying to do numbers is hard. Number two, prioritize it. Make intimacy and sex a priority and understand and witness how it helps shape and change your relationship. And then number three is address those other factors that have got to be addressed because sex 
is important. So whether that means hiring a babysitter or perhaps going on more romantic dates, or maybe it's going to a doctor and getting your cardiovascular system checked up so that you can go back to getting healthy, firm, strong erections and feel like having sex again. I don't care what it is, devise a plan and pull on the tools of the internet to help you. To that point, please make sure right now that you are subscribed to this channel because that's the best way for you to get high quality sex education delivered to you every single week from me, Caitlin V. Also find me on Instagram and make sure while you're down there to give this video a thumbs up. Number six is think creatively about what's possible. Now I said at the top of this video, I wasn't going to give you recommendations that required you to go outside of your own integrity or act outside of transparency, honesty, and authenticity with your partner. And I'm not, but when I say get creative about what's possible, you have to know I am fully endorsing all kinds of creativity. You know, sometimes monogamy is not the greatest relationship setup for all people. We can be emotionally monogamous, but get our sexual needs met elsewhere. If you're interested in doing this, the greatest community I think that has done this and, and tackled this are people who have fetishes, are interested in exploring kink and BDSM. Often when one partner is into BDSM and wants to play around with kink and the other one doesn't, that partner feels like the one that has the need feels like that they're not going to be satisfied here in this lifetime on planet earth unless they get that need met. And without getting that need met, they are going to end up straying or doing something outside of their integrity. And so these two partners can have a lot of different arrangements. Don't ask, don't tell a situation of like keeping things privately. They can do some version of monogamish relationship. They can work out something where this person gets to go to the dungeon and play around and experience. What I'm trying to say is that there's a lot that's possible and there are people who have already figured it out. You don't have to figure it all out for yourself. Get creative, seek other experiences, other people's experiences, and then model your own relationship off of those. And finally, number seven, set the point at which you are willing to walk away and then hold to it. Now this sucks. I am not one for ultimatums, but I am one for boundaries. And if your boundary in a relationship is that sexual intimacy has to be a priority for you to be satisfied, you can absolutely have every single right to own that. Now you might not want to walk away from your partner, but you might have to address to them, listen, if this doesn't become a part of our relationship, if sexual intimacy doesn't raise up and become a priority between us, then I am going to seek intimacy and sex elsewhere. I'm going to do it in a way that is safe. I'm going to do it in a way that is consensual with that other person. I'm going to do it in such a way that doesn't involve you or our kids or our family in any sort of negative way. The only way that you're going to be involved is when you see me happy, when you see me satisfied, when you see me full of joy. Now, what that arrangement looks like could be a lot of different things. It could be visiting with professionals. It could be having a consensual arrangement with another partner. That part I'm going to leave to you to figure out because it's your sex life. And again, if you want my Help. you can apply for coaching. This is what I do. I help people to figure out all kinds of sticky situations from erectile dysfunction, premature ejaculation, sexlessness, and marriage, getting into a relationship after you leave your sexless marriage. It's all game and I'd be happy to help you. But just to put a fine point at the end of this video, you have every right to say, this is what is going to work for me and stop telling yourself that your partner is the reason that you cannot experience everything that you want in life. You can have it all. You can. You just have to get creative about how you get there. All right, what did we cover today? Sexlessness and marriage. It happens up to 20% of all marriages. It can be devastating. It is important. You can address it. Highly recommend that you consult with a professional, even if that's just a book. Prioritize this, make this a part of your relationship. Don't try to communicate all about it all at once and make sure most of all that you like and subscribe to this video so that you can get updated every time I post a new video addressing modern sex and relationship challenges. And if you want my help, be sure to apply for one-on-one -on -one coaching. The link is in the description below. I'll see you here next week. Mwah!